sometimes I just lay here and daydream or have a nap. <laughs> but it's just nice to have a space where you can have time out if you need a break. So really the key to styling a home office is to keep it minimal, organized, and surround yourself with as much inspiration as you can. Hi, I'm Style Director Kerry ann Jones and welcome to my YouTube channel where I chat all things home, style and design. Each week on my series, Styling Spaces, I'll share with you my expert advice and you'll learn styling tips and tricks and I'll give you the lowdown on what's hot on interiors. So let's get into it. Welcome to episode seven of Styling Spaces. For this episode, I'm going to answer the five questions that I get asked the most about styling. On the first Sunday evening of each month, I host style sessions on my Instagram stories where you can ask me any questions about interior styling, design and renovating. I try and answer as many as I can to help you with your styling problems. So I thought it would be fun to share what these questions are because you too might be wondering the same thing. So let's dive in. Question one is, can you give us some tips for styling a bathroom? I'm so glad that people ask this question because I think bathrooms often get neglected when it comes to styling. It's an afterthought and bathrooms are used every day in the home. So it's nice to put some effort in and it can be really minimal effort too. So here on my bathroom vanity, I've styled a vase with some flowers. I've got a candle and a ring dish. Now you can use maybe trinkets or a crystal, something like that to create a vignette. Then over here, I've got my hand soap and hand cream in the middle. And up here, I've got my, all of my favorite perfumes on display. Now, perfumes are a really great decorative touch and it's also practical as well to have them at arm's reach when I'm getting ready. Over here by my bathtub, I have a timber stool for some texture. And then I've also used some sheer curtains to allow some soft light in. I've also added a little artwork in my bathroom. So I have a shelf wall and I've just leaned the artwork on here, but you could also hang it on the wall as well. I think artworks in the bathroom add a really beautiful touch. So I'll take you to the other side of my bathroom. So here I have a heated towel rack and I've styled it with a dark olive green towel. So this color ties in with the rest of the color palette throughout my home. So there are so many ideas to try for bathroom spaces and they're really simple too. Question two is how can I style my home office to feel creative? Okay, well, this is my home office here where I go to feel inspired and productive. Firstly, my desk is really quite minimal. I find that having an uncluttered space makes me feel more organized. So I keep everything that I need in this cupboard over here. I think storage is really important. I find if the mess is out of sight, then it's out of my mind and I can focus on what's in front of me. Natural light is also really important, especially if you're trying to focus. I find that if my eyes or my brain need a break, looking out the window really helps. But also desk lighting is essential too if you work at night. So I have a beautiful table lamp here on my desk too. To feel creative and inspired, I absolutely need to have a mood board in front of me. I have quotes or images, editorial spreads, people that inspire me like interior designer Kelly Wurstler. I have a quote from fashion stylist Grace Coddington. I even have a little love letter from my daughter Poppy. So all these things really inspire me and I change them up often. I also have fabric textures too that I like. It's really just a treasure trove of all the things I'm loving at the moment. 
Up here I have a shelf to display all of my favourite things. I have books, art, ceramics, lots of treasures that I just love looking at. And over here I have a small sofa or you could use an armchair too. If you have enough room, it's really nice to have a space where you can just take a moment to switch off. Sometimes I just lay here and daydream or have a nap. <laughs> But it's just nice to have a space where you can have time out if you need a break. So really the key to styling a home office is to keep it minimal, organised and surround yourself with as much inspiration as you can. The next question is, how do I choose art for my home? This is such a great question. I think art is really important. It adds character and depth to a space. But finding the right piece of art for the right budget can be challenging. I think doing research first is the best step. And then I would suggest looking at art galleries or online galleries, taking note of the artists and styles of art that you're drawn to. You can also look at Instagram too or even blogs and magazines. These publications have art in an interior, so it gives you context to see how the art looks in a room. If you can't afford to buy original works yet, there are plenty of places that sell prints too. You can buy these online or in homeware stores or even Etsy. I think it's also worth mentioning before you buy art, you need to decide on where you'd like to hang it and measure up the dimensions of that space. There is nothing worse than buying this beautiful artwork in the wrong size. I think you can get away with art that's too big because then it looks expensive, but you can not get away with art that's too small for a space. It looks off, the scale and the proportions will look wrong and it will attract attention for the wrong reasons. So make sure you measure up first. But art is such a personal thing. I see art as an investment. If I love it, it's gonna stay with me for a lifetime. I have artworks that I bought 15 years ago, and while my interior style has changed, I still find a place for them in our home because those artworks have been a part of our life, our story, and that makes them special to us. Question four is, can you mix different timber tones in the same area? Yes, you absolutely can. I've done this in my own home. So here in my kitchen, I've used a walnut timber veneer. And then over here in my dining room, I have a black dining table with walnut chairs and the floors are pine timber. I've used a matte finish for all of these surfaces. So the finish is consistent and minimal. The timber tones also work harmoniously together. I find timbers that have a lot of red in them tend to clash with other timber tones. So these are warm but subtle tones and they work really well together. I think a space that uses all the same timber tone everywhere can just look a little flat because there is no variation and it's just all the same. So yes, absolutely okay to use different wood tones together. It makes a far more interesting space in my opinion. And lucky last question, what's the best way to mix vintage with new contemporary furniture? Okay, so I think a home can look like a furniture showroom or a little over-decorated by not having something that tells a story like a vintage piece. I think the best way to add vintage is to first figure out what design period you like. Do you like mid-century, art deco or French provincial? The list goes on but browse some vintage stores and have a look online to figure out what you're drawn to. Once you have a solid idea of the era and style that you like, create a mood board with a photo of your room and the vintage piece that you'd like to buy. Consider if the style suits the room and how it would look with the other furniture pieces. Remember too, you can always reupholster furniture if the current fabric doesn't work. That's what I'm gonna do with this armchair right here. I just bought it last week and I love the shape and the style, but the upholstery fabric just is not for me. So I'm gonna recover it in a new fabric in the next few months. So I can't wait to show you once it's done, so stay tuned. 
So let's recap over these tips. In the bathroom, style vignettes on the vanity. Art is a nice touch and inject colour with the towels. My next tip was for the home office. Have your desk next to natural light, surround yourself with lots of inspiration and keep your desk minimal and tidy. My tips for choosing art are to do your research, measure up and know where you want to hang it. Look at buying art as an investment, not an expense. And next is for mixing timbers. Yes, you can. Just try to avoid timbers with red tones as they are more challenging to pair with other timber tones. Lastly, for incorporating vintage in your home, do your research on the design period that you like, create a mood board and consider reupholstering fabrics on furniture as an option. I hope that you've enjoyed these tips and I would be so grateful if you could like this episode and subscribe to see more. I have a free styling download, just check the show notes below for the link to sign up. And as I mentioned earlier, I have an online interior styling 101 course where I show you how to style each room of your home in more detail. I also help you discover your personal interior style and feel confident styling your home. You can check these out in the show notes and enroll. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you for the next episode of Styling Spaces.